Can you restore a classic car with no previous experience? And especially in this tiny shed? Stick around to find out how. If you're new here, I'm Tom Shorrock, and my mission is to restore a classic Mini in this shed, which are built for 200 pounds. It's made from plastic, salvaged pallets, and scrap wood from building sites. Anyway, enough of the background, how about you join me inside? The first thing we need to do is spin the car over. Now that's spun over, we need to assess the area where I'm going to work. And I made this the other day, and it's nothing fancy, it's just a little piece. And I made one for the other side, and I thought, kill two birds with one stone, cut two at the same time. And I've made it slightly bigger, so there's enough room to chop it down. Squeeze through the window, as always. So this piece is basically going to go there. And it is too big at the moment, but we're going to have to weld it in. And uh, what I'm going to do is get it all ready, punch some holes in it, and we can weld that in and then we've also got to make another piece for over here to close the floor off. So what I've done is just mark a black line on this and this will just show us where we need to cut it to get it to sit flush. Let's whip the grinder out and give that a cut. Probably wants a little bit more just off there to get a nice tight fit. Right, so I've given that a bit of a fettle, changed the shape of it just with a flat disc running it along the edge just to take a bit off. And then what I've done is I've marked the holes up on here. These top ones I'll be able to punch with the air tool because I've only got probably about 10 mil reach on there wrapped with the indentation on the tool. The other ones I'll probably have to do on the pillar drill in the other garage, which is fine. But as you can see, it only goes in so far. So I'll get these punched and um, we should be good to go. So for that, we need air. So we'll just get that tool. There you go, all punched. Bit of weld through primer on that. Prep the area in there, and Bob's your uncle. For this next repair, I'm gonna to have to make a new piece out of metal. So I'll show you what we're gonna make, and I did it last time just by bending it round what was already there. As you can see down here, there should be a piece that carries on and finishes on the floor. So I'm gonna cut that out, measure it, and then we'll knock it into shape. Now what a lot of people don't appreciate when restoring cars is the amount of time it takes to carry out such a small repair. First you have to measure up, mark it out on a piece of sheet metal, then cut it out, clean the metal, trial fit it, adapt it for that better fitment, prep it with weld through primer, and all this is before we can even begin to think about welding it in place. And when you're restoring your first car, like myself with no experience, you can find it very tedious and tiresome. Honestly, there has been times where I've finished a full day in the shed feeling frustrated because the repair I've carried out cannot be seen or appreciated from the exterior of the car. But I suppose it's part of the process and you either throw in the towel or stick with it. I choose the latter every time. So with the repair piece cut out, it's time to see if it fits. So we're back inside the car. I've got the bit of metal with me. I'm gonna try and get it into shape by using some mole grips, a hammer, and of course, a bit of a knocking stick. So as you can see, it's slowly taking shape. And what I'm trying to follow is the contour of this piece here. So when I push it down, I can cut that back, conscribe it, and get it all into shape. And then I can shape it round the door where the mole grips are at the moment. You'll notice I've left it overlapped and that's because I need to cut into this piece to butt weld them two together. And then what I'm gonna have to do is flop this bit of the floor back and slide it behind it because it's supposed to go behind and not in front. So I've made a bit of progress with this. I'll show you what I've done. Um, I did have to drill a couple of spot welds out because when I did the doorstep, I must have forgot about this and spot welded the whole thing up. But yeah, I'll spin you around and have a look. So this is what I've come up with. That's where I've had to drill the spot welds out to try and get in there a bit better so I could flop that back. I've basically knocked, slid that down the back knocked it into shape, and then what I'll do, <clears throat> I'm gonna draw a line down here, cut through that, I'm gonna cut this down as well so it follows that line, um, and then once it's all prepped and got a bit of well-free primer on this side and that side, I'll flop it back and then I'll drive a self-tapping screw through that to pull the two panels together. Quite an awkward one to repair that. In fact, it was such a tight space to get into 
um, and get prepped. I had to, had to whip the Dremel out and get in there with a wire brush just to basically clean all the metal off so it's prepped so I get good welds. Time to get the hot glue gun out. So there you go. It's all welded in. All I need to do now is grind all these heads down, give it a coat of primer and get some seam sealer on it. But before I do that, I'm gonna get this one welded in over here and then we're nearly done. Honestly, it's such a slow process doing all this. I've been doing this since two o'clock in the afternoon today and it's now 6 p.m. and it's dark outside. <sighs> Spend so much time waiting for primer to dry just so I can get the welder in. Ugh, but we're getting there. Now we finally have a little bit of daylight, I can show you exactly what these patch repairs look like. I've even gone one step further and applied a little bit of seam sealer. If you want to know how I did this, click up here to watch the video where I just smeared some very, very sticky material all over the car. But with that, Let's move in a little bit closer. So as you can see, this is one of the areas we carried out a patch repair. Now I welded it up this section here, did a few plug welds through, and then we've put a nice little bit of seam sealer around there. And as you can tell, it doesn't really look like anything's been repaired there, and it looks how it should. But that's not the only repair we carried out. I'll show you the other one. And there you have it. I just need to spot weld across here. I've not had time to do that, but I will do it. Few little welds there, bit of seam sealer, it slid down the back, plug welded through, and you would never know that that's been repaired. Sadly, all the welding isn't over on this car because there is still quite a lot to do. We need to fit the front end, and I also need to order it because I've not got it yet. But one thing I have started to do, I'll show you, it's just at the back of the car. So as you can see, I've cut this piece out here. And the reason I've had to do this is because it was all rotten in that back corner, but me being a lemon, I forgot to fit the floor strengthener in when I did the floor. So it's been very awkward, but I've managed to do it and I've done it by drilling some big holes here, welding it through, grinding it back, bit of filler over there and you'll never ever see it. This is what the repair panel looks like. I've cut it down to size. I'll slowly offer it in and I'll show you roughly what it'll look like once it's been welded and fitted. That's not the easy bit really because you can get a lot of panel warpage on this, but I'll show you. So this panel fits on here and it does fit like an absolute glove. Obviously I need the use of some mole grips to clamp it into position, but if you look there, there is just no lippage. And if you want to find out how I've done that, you'll have to join me in the next video because this is a difficult repair to do and it's difficult to get it looking right. And believe me, because I balls the other side up drastically. So bad that I'm gonna to have to do it again. But that's one thing about this channel, I am not afraid of showing my mistakes so you guys don't do the same. Do us a favor, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.